Members, good morning. My call to order meeting of the Subcommittee on Technical Legislative Amendments on Traffic Arrangements for Hong Kong, Joy Macau Bridge. According to our procedures, we have to elect a chairman for the subcommittee. In accordance with uh, Section uh, ROP uh, 22 and also other procedures attached to the Annex, I will now elect a chairman. Well, let me finish first. Well, um, a valid nomination has to be made verbally by a member and su supported by at least uh, one member with the consent of the member nominated. Nominations, please. Uh, Mr. Lo Wai Kok, I nominate Mr. Chan Han Pan. I second. Ms. Ronick Chen uh, seconds. Mr. Chan Han Pan, do you agree? I do. I accept. Uh, any other nominations? If there are no other nominations, I declare Mr. Chan Han Pan elected. Do we have uh, to elect a deputy chairman for the subcommittee? All right, uh, please invite the administration to join us now. On the uh, legal notices and um, uh, technical amendments, uh, please declare interest. If you have direct or indirect pecuniary interest, please declare now. Mr. Yu Si Wing, a company under my group uh, is engaged in cross boundary. Uh, coach uh, business. All right, please put on record, Secretary. Well, first invite the administration to uh, brief members on the six pieces of subleg. We'll open the floor to members for questions afterwards, and uh, after that, we will uh, go into um, the class by class scrutiny of the subleg administration. When you're ready, please, Ms. Lau. Thank you, Chairman and members. Good morning. With the commissioning of the Hong Kong Shui Macau Bridge or the HKZMB, we have uh, to implement appropriate traffic arrangements for vehicles using the Hong Kong boundary crossing facilities and the Hong Kong Link Road. The um, uh, arrangements are technical in nature, and the uh, amendments will form the legal basis for such arrangements. There are five main areas covered. Uh, first, operation of drop gates at Hong Kong BCF. You know, uh, the drop um, gate uh, at the entrance of our car parks, and then um, management and operation of two uh, tow free government tunnels, and then uh, driving on the right arrangement for the Hong Kong Link Road or HKLL, and additional taxi fare payable by passengers for the use of the Lentau Link. Under the uh, two-way uh, toll collection arrangement. This is uh, technical because uh, on uh, the HKLL uh, fare is payable um, 
on a one-way basis, but now it will be on a two-way basis. And the fifth is permitting operating areas for anti-taxis and lentil taxis. In February, we consulted the uh, traffic car panel of the council, and in general, members are supported the uh, proposals. All right, if members have questions, you can uh, now put them to the administration. Three minutes each. Uh, Ms. Tanya Chen. Speakers off mic. Ms. Tanya Chen. Yes. I'd like to know whether we are going through, we will have a clause by clause scrutiny, right? We are only asking general policy questions here, right? Some of the amendments might be technical in nature, but some of them I would regard them as a very uh, significant legal arrangements. Um, Hong Kong and Macau have a right hand drive instead of left. And then in Guangdong province, there are four uh, intersections. Uh, Sha Tao Ka Long, Man Kam To, so and so forth. The uh, first have uh, driving on the left arrangement. And then for uh, the Deep Bay, it uh, connects with the Hong Kong Shamjan. And they are managed uh, by the um, by Hong Kong. And uh, there is the uh, driving on the left arrangement. So uh, why do we have to concede in this manner? It's always driving on the left. Why is it that for uh, HKRL, uh, HKLR, we have uh, to adopt uh, this uh, new arrangement? I think the issue has been discussed at the relevant panel. Well, I think uh, left driving is the usual arrangement. Uh, for the main bridge of the HK ZNMB, uh, the uh, major portion of it uh, is on uh, mainland side, and they have uh, right driving. And for HKLR, it is directly linked uh, to the bridge, and the uh, speed is 100 kilometers. We propose to make a link a switching arrangement at Hong Kong BCF. We believe uh, this is the most appropriate arrangement this is to safeguard the um, safety of uh, motorists using the bridge. We've written to the um, panel. Uh, well, uh, there are similar arrangements in Thailand. You have to speak directly into the microphone. Yes, all right, then I will uh, speak to the microphone. For Thailand uh, is... Um, Left hand drive and allows right hand drive. There is a bridge linking the two, and they have uh, this uh, switching lane arrangement at the um, boundary crossing. So, our arrangement can best protect the safety of um, motorists and uh, passengers. Well, for Deep Bay and Shamjan Bay, there is a portion of the bridge over mainland waters, and yet uh, there is still uh, left driving. I'd like to know why is it so. Uh, have you uh, designed it first and make it a phase a company and, uh, so that we have no choice but to accept it? For uh, Shamjan Bay, the whole bridge is um, uh, managed by Hong Kong. So Hong Kong has jurisdiction all the way to the end of the bridge. Although uh, the bridge uh, uh, covers part of uh, their waters, the whole bridge is under Hong Kong jurisdiction. And therefore, we have uh, the uh, traffic arrangements following our rule. But then they do not have uh, this uh, link road and the speed is not as high, so uh, a direct comparison is not that appropriate. Now, uh, for that uh, friendship bridge between uh, Thailand and Laos, the paper has been sent to members already. Mr. Lo, well, I am a mainland Hong Kong driver because I have got 
uh, maintenance license for my vehicle as well. So when I am uh, in the mainland, I follow their right driving rule. I have a, a right hand drive. So uh, at first, I had to be very cautious. I could easily commit a mistake when uh, uh, there is a right turn. And then in the U.S., I also have uh, the experience of uh, driving um, right-hand drive. So whether it is it is a right-hand or left-hand drive, it depends on the uh, traffic arrangements of uh, the place concerned. And if uh, the uh, driving it is different from your driving habit. It is better if we start right driving at HKLL. I think uh, this is a better arrangement for uh, motorists of Hong Kong driving to the mainland. And uh, for the other way round, of course. Uh, now, I don't know. How many vehicles uh, from the mainland will make use of HAEZMB to come to Hong Kong? Uh, to put it simply, I uh, accept the right driving arrangement on Hong Kong LL. But uh, for fixed penalty, uh, so and so forth, I think we have to adjust it appropriately. In the past, uh, uh, the uh, fines apply to uh, left driving arrangement, but uh, because for Hong Kong LR we have uh, the right driving arrangement, then um, the fines have to be adjusted. Given that this is such a massive traffic network, Drivers uh, may be fined for uh, certain contraventions. So, what is our jurisdiction now? If uh, there are traffic, there are breaches of uh, traffic. If there are traffic offences on the bridge, uh, which side will take enforcement action? There will be no. Cross boundary enforcement. So, if the offence happens in Hong Kong, then Hong Kong police will uh, enforce the relevant rules. What about on the main bridge? If it is uh, in mainland waters, then uh, the relevant enforcement authorities across the boundary will be uh, will take enforcement action. Will Hong Kong drivers be able to tell? Uh, where is uh, the uh, dividing line? There will be signs at the junction. We will have clear uh, signs to uh, warn the motorists which side uh, they are on. Can you tell us where that uh, cutting point is? Is in the middle of the sea. I think we have got a plan attached. Yes, please uh, show us. Appendix X H Appendix H to the logical brief. Mr Lam Chakting. Thank you. I raised uh, this issue at the transport panel meeting and that is cross boundary enforcement and rescue operations. Uh the um secretary told us that it would be be, it would depend on uh, where the incident happened. I'm worried that sometimes uh, both sides are involved. For instance, if uh, on the bridge, section of the bridge, 
belonging uh, to the mainland jurisdiction, uh, people may think that they have a greater protection uh, if um, they are on Hong Kong side, and then they may drag uh, their vehicles all the way until they have ho enter Hong Kong territory. Okay, hi. At the intersection points, <clears throat> do we have closed circuit TV or near the intersection? Will we have law enforcement officers to handle cross border traffic accidents or other? Uh, illegal activities. Could uh, the secretary respond? Yes, there are. You don't have to worry. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is managed by the authority, and in the Hong Kong side, we have equipment to monitor roadside conditions. Regarding first aid, uh, the territorial principle it has to be upheld. But in first aid, the victim's safety and interests are considered. So the three governments will negotiate on how to provide the most adequate and uh, timely care. So, Secretary, do you mean that at the intersection, one side is Hong Kong, the other side is China? So, if the Chinese side can reach the scene quicker, and if they think that they can deliver the victim to the mainland hospitals faster than Hong Kong, they will. The victim will be taken to the mainland hospital. Well, given current first aid operations, the three governments are negotiating. We're still discussing the details, uh, but the principle is that if there are traffic accidents, we want the injured the victims to get timely medical care. So if the location is at, if the accident location is at the intersection, let's say Hong Kong uh, first aid comes first, they will uh, have to rely on the medical professionals judgment. But if a mainland injured person uh, is uh, just one step away from the mainland uh, border, will they be uh, neglected that you can cross uh, you can provide first aid across the border we are still in negotiations as I said just now the principle is it has to be in the injured interest but uh, law enforcement will not be cross-border we're still talking about for, uh, cross border first aid uh, this is something the three governments need to negotiate we will take note of your views mr. you see Chairman, I'm concerned about the intersection location. If there's an accident, I wonder if there are facilities on the bridge to notify either Hong Kong or mainland first aid authorities. So we see there are phone booths. Uh, Hong Kong drivers, they are familiar with Hong Kong. But if a lot of new drivers, when they take, when they use the bridge, they are not familiar, and uh, the, the the vehicle could have stalled, or there might be an accident. So I wonder, in your negotiations, will you have guidelines for? Uh, medic for, for, for uh, will you have guidelines for the facilities and will you make uh, have appropriate signage? Is there also a pledge? Uh, because if uh, accidents occur in the Hong Kong side, do they have a pledge? How long they, it will take to reach the accident site? And what's the maximum time? It's the same for the mainland. So <coughs> we know that. The bridge is not that wide. If there's an accident, it will affect traffic on both sides. If there are, if there is death or injury, it has a large impact. So, in your discussions, will you uh, discuss these details? Yes, there are. We have taken note of that. We want to ensure the vehicle and passenger safety when using the bridge. 
So, in our talks on first aid, we have talked about uh, providing the best first aid. So, in the bridge or links, there are closed circuit TVs. If there's an incident, we also have a notification mechanism. The three governments will be aware and provide uh, first aid. Just now, Mr. Yu talked about telecom facilities. Yes, there are. The bridge is different from border checkpoints, uh, so drivers uh, might be able to familiarize uh, uh, quicker on uh, shorter uh, uh, distances, but now we have a long bridge and left-hand drive, right-hand drive difficulties. So in driver training or uh, do we have any requirements for cross-border drivers or are the requirements the same for regular drivers? Currently on the Hong Kong side there is already a lane changing arrangement for right-hand drive. There is sufficient signage so drivers they can very quickly and naturally get into the driving mode they won't see a sign and have to uh, make changes so there will be a link road that will uh, take them left and it's not a deliberate uh, arrangement it's a very smooth arrangement so we believe regarding the right hand drive they can take the Hong Kong link and all the way to the bridge and they can accommodate to, to that plus the cross-border drivers they are already familiar with the, the traffic conditions just like when we travel overseas if we go to the US we have to uh, do use a right-hand drive so there is a psychological uh, or a mental preparation in advance so the licensing, driver's license arrangements are the same. The written test or assessment is the same. It's the same. Uh, so cross-border drivers need to take a test. Mr. Wong Ting Gong. Thank you, Chairman. I've, uh, I have a mainland driver's license for 25 years now. I'm familiar with the mainland driving conditions. I agree. Uh, with the, the traffic arrangements and I can imagine it will be smooth and successful but I do have some prop, uh, some questions the first is insurance you know that cross-border vehicles have separate insurance arrangements driving in Hong Kong we use Hong Kong insurance companies uh, driving on the mainland. You have to purchase mainland uh, vehicle insurance. So if there is a ac is an accident on the bridge, and uh, you, there needs to be an insurance claim, how do we handle that? And when you make insurance claims, mainland arrangements and Hong Kong are different. For example, if uh, I'm not responsible for, I can claim the third party insurance to cover my insurance, my repair and maintenance, but on the mainland, they don't have such arrangements. Uh, each uh, has to handle their own uh, damages. So, uh, being the insured party, we need to make different considerations, but. Uh, the, leg the uh, legislation is not clear on insurance. Second, uh, we, ha we just now we talked about saving human lives, but uh, f tow vehicles are s uh, another issue. So having two uh, uh, cross-border license, uh, if there's a breakdown or malfunction, s maintenance on the mainland, if there are technical issues and also confidence issues. So typically, we would like to have the repairs done in Hong Kong. So if you're in the hinterland, we have to find uh, tow vehicles and uh, tow it back uh, to the border point and then uh, 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 there's a change uh, at the border where you get the Hong Kong tow vehicles to tow. So 
uh, that means we have to tow vehicles uh, on the mainland towed uh, to the border and then a, a Hong Kong tow vehicle towed away so can we allow for tow vehicles to cross the border and tow the vehicle back to Hong Kong uh, we're, we're not talking about saving human lives it's about towing uh, vehicles a third question on the bridge communications are very important so the network will it be a Hong Kong telecom network or a mainland uh, telecom service provider network because we're, uh, saving human lives and vehicles are very important three questions thank you chairman thank you for the specific and detailed uh, input regarding insurance currently uh, you have to purchase mainland insurance and in Hong Kong you have to purchase Hong Kong insurance uh, according to my understanding we don't have uh, one insurance that covers two jurisdictions so if the incident occurs on the mainland you need to use you know, the mainland arrangements so we had talked with the insurance authority to make it convenient uh, to purchase this type of insurance so could you purchase two types of insurance uh, so as Mr. Wong stated you have to comply with the local uh, uh, laws so when we talk about saving human lives that is paramount but we also talked about towing vehicles so according to Mr. Wong's uh, views uh, if they're just a little bit way short of the Hong Kong border could they tow the vehicle back to Hong Kong this is something we're discussing so we have to negotiate with Macau China and reach an agreement we and uh, uh, need to, we need to read a, a consensus the third question was about communications uh, uh, according to my understanding uh, you should be able to receive Hong Kong signals uh, of course signal strength uh, would vary sometimes you, you might be able to get uh, a China signals uh, there's uh, no big difference so the public needs to make a choice according to their needs uh, Mr. Yik Ziming Chairman I want to follow up on Mr. Yu Xing's question so there will be suitable emergency phones uh, on the bridge so let's say we this is the sea this is Hong Kong that's mainland so these emergency phones shouldn't we have a, a phone on each side of the border I'm on the I'm, I might be on the Hong Kong side uh, which, which uh, phone should I use on the bridge on the bridge we have CCTV we can detect incidents on the Hong Kong side Mr. Yik is, talk, is referring to communication I uh, have the I've parked a vehicle and then I pick up a phone and say I, I'm in a, a difficulty well of course uh, we have you say you have TCCTV but is a 24-hour surveillance and since you have telecom devices I just want to know at the border shouldn't there be one for the Chinese side and one for the Hong Kong side if you only have one uh, I might want to have the Chinese side uh, uh, for assistance thank you for the suggestion the three governments have an emergency response system so no matter which uh, side you call they will make uh, arrangements it's a uh, unified uh, centralized there will be a very uh, intimate uh, network so even if you don't make any declaration our uh, CCTV will detect it it's we have a long-term surveillance I still want to emphasize that uh, 
I've done relevant work. You don't, you cannot rely too much on the 24-hour surveillance. Mr. Lok Jong Hong. Thank you, Chairman. Um, many members, as well as our motorists, have made the suggestions. Is it possible to have a major car park for uh, cars from Hong Kong across the boundary? So that uh, there can be a park and ride arrangements, and also the same applies to Hong Kong side. Is it feasible? Will you only allow uh, people with uh, mainland driving license to use the bridge? Thank you. Uh, Macau. I think uh, Mr. Michael Luke is talking about. Uh, car park facilities for private vehicles. Macau has got this arrangement. We're discussing with Macau to see how Hong Kong vehicles uh, can access the car park so that um, uh, there can be a park and ride arrangements for uh, Zhuhai. They do not have uh, such facilities. For HKBCF, we have 650 parking spaces for, pri for private Cars, but uh, that is after customs and immigration clearance. Uh, that is uh, for Hong Kong vehicles to park and transfer to public transport. For uh, vehicles from the mainland, we don't have such facilities for them yet. But the Development Bureau is conducting a public consultation on the uh, facilities at the uh, superstructure, and we will consider uh, whether we can have a car park for mainland vehicles for park and ride arrangements. So Mr. Lucas' uh, question on uh, whether only uh, people with uh, both uh, Hong Kong and mainland uh, driving license can uh, use the bridge. No, no. Whether the destination is uh, Macau or Zhuhai, uh, will only vehicles with a mainland license plate be allowed to use the bridge? There will be a. Will we need the license in order to follow up? And the same applies to the other two governments for uh, Macau. They have space at their boundary crossing to build a car park. We are discussing with Macau to allow Hong Kong private vehicles to uh, use it. As regards the license required, we are discussing with the Macau government. But the majority of the bridge is uh, under the jurisdiction of the mainland. So, I'd like to know. Um, now, even though there is a car park on the cow side, uh, Hong Kong vehicles will need a mainland license plate before they can use the bridge. Oh, now I get it. Because the main bridge is in mainland waters, will a mainland license plate be required for going to Macau? We're still discussing it, but I think uh, the um, the um, Inclination is no. Members are asking about uh, the actual operational arrangements. Now, this is a subcommittee we have uh, to uh, deal with uh, the um, legislation itself. Members have lots of questions about the operation of the bridge. They are not directly related to the um, Subsidiary legislation we have to examine, but in the first round, I allowed such questions, and then Miss Law, you are aware of our concerns. I hope uh, you can um, respond to these questions in due course. Doctor Kwakaki, 
uh, this bridge is highly controversial and uh, cause it is a uh, fate a company with no choice to but accept this white elephant. We are quite worried about the possible chaos associated with the operation of the bridge. Well, for mainland drivers, some of them may have good driving habits, but uh, as we can uh, see in uh, video uh, footages, some of them are rather horrible. So, will you remind vehicles from the mainland that they have to be law abiding here? And that uh, Hong Kong traffic laws apply, and uh, these drivers have to be very cautious. I dare not say that there aren't unscrupulous drivers in Hong Kong, but I think uh, proportionally, uh, drivers from the mainland are more worrying. And for the uh, right driving arrangement, I hope the administration will ensure that uh, vehicles from the mainland will not be allowed to um, uh, to uh, use our net road networks easily for commercial and industrial vehicles. We've seen how irresponsible drivers. Are oh, in the mainland. So, uh, regarding the uh, signage, can you include information on our uh, penalty uh, so that they should be absolutely careful? And you have to include phone numbers that they call, that they can call. Uh, because, uh, theoretically speaking, Hong Kong police uh, should. Enforce our laws after they have entered Hong Kong territory, and I think, theoretically speaking, our police are not uh, as um, bad as the public security officers over the boundary. So we still trust our police. Can you have clear signage to warn drivers that they have to strictly? Comply with our traffic rules, including driving speed, so and so forth. And these are not seen uh, in this paper. Yes, signage, please. Thank you, Dr. Kwok. Thank you for your confidence in law enforcement agencies of Hong Kong. We treat all drivers equally whether they are from the mainland or from Hong Kong. Uh, let me show you some statistics. In 2016 or 2014, 15, 16, there were around 15,000 or 16,000 traffic accidents per year. In 2014, only eight cases involved mainland drivers. 10, uh, 11 and 10 in 2015 and 16, respective. And uh, that accounted for less than 0.07% of the uh, total number of traffic accidents in Hong Kong. So, uh, Dr. Kwok, you can rest assured that we um, have not seen from the figures that mainland drivers are the major cause of traffic accidents in Hong Kong. But of course, at the junction of the two territories, we will have clear signage to warn them that they are already in Hong Kong waters, and the same and vice versa. And then uh, drivers have to comply with our driving rules at all times, and we require the same of mainland drivers and Hong Kong drivers. Yes, uh, this is not just about Hong Kong waters, but important uh, rules, uh, traffic rules and penalties, and also phone numbers. Uh, will you include it in the signage? Well, for 0.07%, this is because we have very few men and vehicles driving freely in Hong Kong. So to play safe, can you include uh, a bit more information on the signage. There is no harm 
In so doing, when Macau or mainland vehicles come to Hong Kong, even though they may be rather uh, reckless when um, in the mainland, they should strictly adhere to our traffic rules while in Hong Kong. And can you include um, on your signs uh, the uh, penalties and so forth to play safe? Uh, noted, Dr. Kwok. That is uh, whether we can have signs to uh, want them to strictly adhere to our traffic rules. Can the Transport Department supplement on uh, what current traffic signs are like? In the main, we'll remind them uh, to keep right. Uh, can you speak closer to the microphone? Uh, because the speed is at 100 kilometers, if we rely on uh, road signs to uh, tell them major information, that is uh, uh, rather uh, the scope is limited, but we will have uh, signs to remind them to keep right at all times. But at our uh, tunnel uh, portals, uh, we have warning signs to uh, tell them about the uh, current state of uh, traffic safety and uh, the speed limit and so on and so forth. I think a similar broadcast can be made at the portal of the bridge, for instance, uh, to tell them that the um, expressway is uh, ending very soon, uh, the tow uh, kiosk or, or the tow plaza is uh, just ahead. Yes, for uh, the scenic tunnel, we will uh, take Dr. Kwok's suggestions. We will uh, take appropriate measures. Mr. Jeremy Tam. I'd like to ask a specific questions of uh, the uh, subsidy legislation. I think the fine is uh, rough at 450, present cap uh, 240. You have new uh, penalties. Uh, the uh, fine is now 450. But you're also uh, raising the fines uh, for fixed penalty offences. Now, if this is passed and the other legislation on fixed penalty uh, tickets are also passed, uh, will the fines here be adjusted accordingly or will it be maintained at $450? Ms. Law, thank you, Mr. Tam, for your question. We are increasing the level of fine for fixed penalty tickets uh, to uh, address uh, offences leading to traffic congestion. So we have chosen four items under uh, CAP 240, and that doesn't include um, left driving offences. So uh, the other legislative amendment exercise doesn't involve uh, this fine concerning left driving arrangement. So for the right driving arrangement, it's just a mirror arrangement. And uh, I'm pleased that uh, LegCo supports our proposal to raise the fixed penalty ticket. And even if that is passed, it is not going to affect uh, the set of legislation. In fact, I'm very unhappy that you are going to raise the fixed penalty fines. Uh, fixed penalties are for offences relating to illegal parking in particular. Now, if there are offences uh, affecting road safety and um, and uh, if the increase is to catch up with inflation, that's okay. But I'm not referring to uh, illegal parking. I uh, just want to ask whether uh, the fines under here on right driving arrangement will also be raised uh, correspondingly. And we will only allow vehicles uh, 
with um, mainland license plate to use the bridge. Now it appears from the administration's response that uh, for Macau uh, it is not necessarily the case. So because there is a car park there, but it appears that for Zhuhai, which will be the major destination uh, for most um, drivers, that means. And uh, only people with um, mainland license plate will be uh, allowed to do that. Thank you for the question. Cross border traffic requires regulation. Uh, land border crossing needs the relevant driver's license. Uh, so the bridge involves cross-border traffic, so they need licenses from both jurisdictions. We will increase the co quota so that more drivers can use the bridge to travel between the two locations, and uh, it can facilitate traffic between Macau and the mainland. We want to enhance economic activity. So we will uh, relax the quota. Do you have a timetable and a number of the quota? The three governments regarding the traffic arrangements are still undergoing negotiations. The principle is to utilize the traffic and economic value of the bridge. Do you have a timetable? Well, the, the, the bridge is about to be completed. So we hope that uh, we the conditions are ready by the end of 2017, and we would like to commission it as soon as possible. So we will make an announcement uh, soon. So we've concluded the first round of questions. I will allow a second round, and I hope we can... Uh, return to the bills committee work. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we talked about cross-border law enforcement and uh, the territorial principle. Now, I have a question that uh, has not been discussed thoroughly. So if somebody breaches the traffic laws in Hong Kong, but they want to evade law enforcement. So near the intersection, do we have law enforcement officers standing by around the clock to prevent traffic accidents or traffic breaches, to uh, prevent them from uh, crossing the border and evading law enforcement? or? Uh, avoid them uh, or uh, prevent them from postponing law enforcement. What what measures do you have? Thank you, Mr. Lam. According to the current mechanism, we will adopt the existing mechanism. So, if a driver breaches Hong Kong traffic laws, the police will issue a fixed penalty ticket or a summons. If the driver has not paid the fine, the police will apply for. Uh, uh, an order from the court or they, uh, where the driver has to appear in court. Uh, if they still continue to ignore it, they will be arrested. So the transport department will not extend the driver's license. Chairman, I'm not uh, asking that. I'm saying at the moment or at the scene, do you have any policies or, or measures where people 300 500 meters before the intersection uh, before the border they have already breached the law they want to evade uh, criminal or civil liability and they want they want to make their way to the mainland side so you need to have mutual legal aid uh, uh, and it will drag on for years uh, do you have any measures uh, within that uh, a few hundred meters of the intersection where there is a clear breach of the Hong Kong law or a clear breach of mainland law and they want to uh, 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 
uh, where they want to abscond to the other uh, jurisdiction. Uh, Chairman, I want to clarify. This is not a, a future issue. It's how we uh, enforce uh, traffic breaches. We have an existing mechanism. So whether whether it occurs if it occurs in Hong Kong, the Hong Kong police will use this mechanism. So can you answer directly? At the near the intersection, near the border intersection, where there are law enforcement officers on duty all the time. Otherwise, in the future, we might have a lot of mainland drivers or Hong Kong drivers going to mainland, uh, so they might have already. These matters should have been dealt with either on the mainland or Hong Kong. So currently, at our uh, uh, land border checkpoints, we have vehicles going to the mainland or mainland vehicles entering Hong Kong. And there might be Hong Kong drivers before they go to the mainland and they've already uh, breached traffic laws on the Hong Kong side. The current mechanism is the existing mechanism. They need to pay Hong Kong fines or if they don't ab uh, abide by the Hong Kong court laws, the, the police will issue a, a warrant for arrest. So that effectively deals with uh, the scenarios uh, described by Mr. Lam. So the penalties uh, will be dealt with uh, according to where the incident occurred. I understand that. I'm, I'm just saying they are absconding. Do you have any measures to prevent them uh, from absconding or uh, do we have any measures to facilitate the repatriation to try them and uh, penalize them? If you have a measure, you can save a lot of time in uh, repatriating uh, uh, so that this is not a new issue. Uh, over the decades, we have four border checkpoints and there has been an existing mechanism to deal with these traffic breaches. So the committee can rest assured we will use existing mechanism, whether they are mainland or Hong Kong driver, if they breach Hong Kong laws, we have an appropriate follow-up and penalty. Ms. Tanya Chan. Well, I want to follow up on Mr. Tamanho's question. We know there are conditions for uh, uh, commissioning the bridge this end of the year. Well, we want to utilize the bridge, and you said you would issue more licenses. So, as a LegCo legislator, oh, will we have a, the individual travel scheme for vehicles? Uh, uh, I recall in Causeway Bay, uh, we had people uh, who would sign petitions. So I need to tell you, uh, we do have uh, across the board objection. Uh, so I think this term of government is facing an uphill battle. So I'd like you to provide a timetable. So we heard that there are telecom facilities on the bridge. So the second question is language. We have dialects, uh, and we really need to rely on text messages. If you if uh, you are in an accident and uh, you the uh, and the if the language is not understood, uh, we have different dialects and accents. So we need to have people who can understand. And on the mainland side, we need people to understand Cantonese. Uh, so for these urgent calls, I think language is very important. So, Chairman, we do have very individual accents uh, amongst our senior officials. Ms. Law, thank you for your input. 
regarding emergency call operators and their linguistic skills. Thank you, Ms. Chan, for the detailed suggestion. We will take note. And most importantly, uh, as long as they can make a call, so whether they call Hong Kong, Macau, or the mainland, the three governments have a close network, and uh, so Ms. Chan can rest assured. So uh, we have large display signs uh, that can provide information. Uh, the transport department said uh, the, the vehicle speeds are very high and uh, you might not be able to provide a lot of information. But when they reach another jurisdiction, we need to remind drivers of emergency numbers they need to call, so you need to notify them in advance. Yes, we will consider that. Whether there will be a lot of vehicles, I think um, Ms. Chan is referring to private vehicles, Will there be a lot of private vehicles from the mainland? We can tell everybody clearly that we are negotiating with the mainland authorities. The, the individual traveler scheme is not being considered. And Mr. Wang Dingong. Mr. Kokake uh, referred to broadcasting. Uh, are you referring to loudspeaker broadcast or uh, radio uh, radio broadcast if uh, if you if uh, the, a loudspeaker is it will scare the children usually we just turn on the radio and listen to broadcast so when he said broadcast I don't know what he's referring to you need to clarify that second I heard that uh, Hong Kong and Macau are in negotiations allowing Hong Kong vehicles, not uh, uh, the dual license vehicles. So before they reach uh, the Macau, there's a car park. I'd like uh, you to clarify our vehicles and passengers. They've already left immigration. Uh, it's regulated by immigration, but with the vehicles. Uh, leave Hong Kong that is regulated by customs so if our vehicles leave Hong Kong every year they need to renew their customs license so if any vehicle uh, if it has not uh, made the relevant application can customs release these vehicles that is Hong Kong vehicles can they leave the Hong Kong jurisdiction can they uh, what is the uh, import-export control? And if it's only limited to Hong Kong licensed vehicles, when the when the vehicles leave the jurisdiction, does uh, is their insurance valid? So this involves a series of legal questions. So I think uh, if you need to answer, if you have that arrangement in mind, you need to consider all the uh, uh, consequences you know, should not give people uh, expectations uh, uh, or the government will be criticized again so another point I'd like to touch on is the road signs so uh, in Hong Kong jurisdiction we use a uh, the Hong Kong signs and I noticed that the, uh, the signs on the mainland are different from Hong Kong They're just traffic signals we have the red amber green and uh, it's different from the mainland uh, on the mainland they have a timer and so on their signage is also different and the uh, characters we have traditional characters they have simplified characters so how do you deal with that so will we will each jurisdiction have its own way thank you chairman 
uh, because of the territorial principle, they will implement their own legislation in Hong Kong. It requires that our signs be displayed in English and traditional Chinese. So we continue to use that. And of course, we heard uh, for dual vehicles. Uh, such as um, mainland commercial vehicles. Commercial vehicles, they have uh, to uh, take an examination to obtain a license to Hong Kong, and that will um, familiarize them with the um, traffic signs of Hong Kong. Regarding private vehicles, uh, Mr. Wong knows the arrangement well. Uh, for um, Hong Kong vehicles, uh, they uh, Hong Kong driving license. They can get an endorsement uh, for driving on the mainland, and the same applies for mainland drivers. If mainland drivers would uh, want to um, know more about uh, traffic signals of Hong Kong, in fact, uh, some signs are self-explanatory. Uh, for instance, a circle uh, with a uh, hundred in between. That means. Uh, in the center, that means that's the uh, driving speed. But if uh, people are interested in knowing the details, on the website of uh, the traffic uh, transport, there uh, there is a set of traffic rules in simplified Chinese characters. Thank you, Mr. Yu Siwing. Thank you. I just heard that in future uh, we may not need a mainland driving license if we uh, to drive to Macau. Many people are interested in driving to Macau, and of course uh, the uh, flow from Macau is uh, not so big. Have you assessed the uh, possible problems arising uh, with uh, the number of parking spaces. Now, if uh, the car park on Macau side is already full and our vehicles continue to drive there, what will there be a pro will there be a problem? And uh, again, uh, we may not have uh, enough uh, parking spaces on Hong Kong side because uh, people uh, may uh, have carpools. As regards uh, the interception, uh, well, uh, some drivers uh, might um, uh, made a mistake, might make a mistake and go to um, um, Zhuhai when the intended destination is Macau. And what will be the penalty for that? Thank you. For vehicles uh, driving f from Hong Kong to Macau, as I said, at the boundary crossing of Macau, there will be private car parking spaces, and the two governments are discussing the arrangements. The preliminary idea is no mainland license is required, although uh, the cars uh, will travel on uh, mainland waters while on the bridge. But then uh, the relevant requirements or license, uh, the relevant uh, license requirements of Macau may apply. So we are discussing it and will announce the details when available. For vehicles uh, destined for, um, for Macau but uh, have made a mistake and go to Zhuhai because they do not have uh, the um, approval to enter Zhuhai, they may have uh, to turn back. Will there be any penalty if a vehicle has made a wrong move? Uh, for instance, uh, will uh, they just be asked to turn uh, turn back and go, or will they be penalized uh, from entering the bridge for one year, for instance? Well, I think if it's just a wrong turn, I think uh, the um, decision will be reasonable. Of course, it is up to the uh, mainland authorities to to decide. But please do clarify it first. Uh, the three governments will adopt a pragmatic approach. All right, and the um, surcharge on taxis uh, due to uh, the two-way uh, plaza, to uh, two-way. Uh, toll collection arrangement that will um, 
add to the uh, operational cost of taxis, will this be an excuse for further taxi fare hikes? I think you're talking about the Lentau link instead of uh, the uh, bridge. Currently, uh, it is a one-way toll collection arrangement. And let me brief you on the background. How come in the past it was just one-way toll collection? Because if you uh, go into Lentau, then uh, in future you uh, must uh, come back uh, via the Lentau link. So it is a one-way toll collection arrangement. But because of uh, the Hong Kong to Macau Bridge, after you have entered a Lentau via Lentau link, there are other road networks for you to go. So. Um, it would be unfair to uh, vehicles if I uh, in the future, and so instead of uh, one way, it will be a two-way toll collection. There will be a more uh, toll uh, kiosks, of course, and that will uh, increase the operating cost of uh, the Lentau Link. There is a established mechanism for. Fixing the toes, we will consider affordability, traffic arrangement, and also uh, operating costs. There is a basket of factors to decide whether the toe has to be adjusted. And all toe adjustment of tunnels will need the approval of uh, the council when necessary. There can be detailed discussion within the council. Mr. Jeremy Tam. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, your understanding or our understanding is is no big deal if you've uh, made a wrong uh, move. Well, that's not always the case. Even in Hong Kong, if you mistakenly uh, enter Ma Wan, you will be fined. So you may objectively think that a car a, a driver will not be penalized. If uh, he has made a wrong turn to Zhuhai, uh, please don't think so, because uh, it may not it, it may not be the case in, even in Hong Kong. So you have to clarify with the other party first. Now there are um, five pieces of legislation, or six pieces of legislation plus amendment to the fixed penalty ticket, and I would. Th think we haven't got the opportunity to discuss details like uh, taxi arrangements, so on and so forth. And our cars that have left Hong Kong territory while uh, on the bridge and while uh, in a car park in Macau, what will uh, be the insurance arrangement? We haven't touched on these for yet. So these are practical details. So I suggest that we conduct a public hearing to allow other stakeholders to come and tell us their views. First, uh, this is unprecedented in Hong Kong. We don't have uh, right driving arrangement in Hong Kong so far, and uh, motorists in Hong Kong may not be used to this arrangement. And I don't know whether they have consulted the stakeholders properly. And uh, for this right driving arrangement, if a left hand drive has reached Hong Kong, now you uh, told us that uh, the involvement of left hand drives, or right hand drives um, in Hong Kong is only 0.07%. Against uh, all the um, traffic accidents in Hong Kong, no, you have to first uh, tell us uh, the number of uh, left-hand drives in Hong Kong and also the number of right-hand drives in Hong Kong before the uh, comparison can be meaningful. If we come to the conclusion that um, by proportion, uh, right-hand, left-hand drives are. Right hand drives have a uh, higher accident rate in Hong Kong. That is a different matter. And I think uh, Mr. Wong Ting Kuo made a very good point. Uh, many, uh, for many insurance uh, coverage, uh, uh, 
uh, the um, compensation is only covered if the accident uh, took place in Hong Kong and not elsewhere. Yes, Rodi explained that right driving or left driving arrangements are similar arrangements on the mainland. Well, because uh, right, the main bridge is uh, in Hong Kong waters. I mean, in mainland waters. So uh, we, uh, because of the territorial um, principle, we have to apply the right traffic arrangement, and the speed is a hundred kilometers. Well, you don't have to repeat this part. I know already. This arrangement can best protect the safety of motorists. And so, uh, what is the purpose of um, having a public hearing on the right driving arrangement? Because uh, in um, on the main in the mainland, they have a similar arrangement. So I don't think um, public hearing will be um, of any use. And uh, regarding uh, the uh, changing operating areas for anti taxis and lent out taxis, uh, we have consulted the taxi associations. We have the majority support of the associations. And earlier on, we also had a very detailed discussion at the uh, transport panel of this council. The m questions are mentioned uh, by uh, Mr. Jeremy Tam has been discussed at the panel there. We had the support of the industry, so it may not be necessary to hold a public hearing given that the amendments are technical in nature. And the third issue is about insurance. Mr. Wong Ting Kwong made it very clear that insurance coverage is needed. And as I said, you have to take out insurance coverage for the respective territory. There is no insurance or coverage that can uh, cover both Hong Kong and uh, the mainland. So if a vehicle is driving to Macau or the mainland, it has to take out insurance coverage for the respective territory. And the administration will see how we can assist the motorists to uh, take out insurance in the respective territory. Thank you. Mr. Lo Kwok, because uh, the uh, main bridge has right driving arrangement, so I think it is more reasonable to have uh, the same arrangement for uh, the uh, Hong Kong L R for uh, safety sake. So I support this arrangement. But as mentioned by members, we have never had right driving arrangement on Hong Kong roads. And that's the reason uh, for the technical or the legislative amendments to a whole set of traffic rules and regulations. So there must be proper warning size before the switch from left driving to right driving. And uh, for vehicles from the other side, on the bridge it is right driving. So is it on the Hong Kong LL. And then there will be the switch to left driving when they come to Hong Kong roads and the there also must be sufficient warning. And because of uh, the right driving arrangement, there will be a lot more traffic uh, signage. Now, I'm not just talking about signage. There must be sufficient warning for both sides, both sides of traffic to uh, be forewarned well beforehand. And there should be booklets or pamphlets prepared so that 
vehicles from all three jurisdictions can understand the uh, traffic arrangements and the rules in the respective territory. Warnings and uh, signages are needed. So, even though Hong Kong drivers are familiar with driving on the mainland, uh, with a Hong Kong driver's license, they can apply for a mainland license. So there should be sufficient experience, but this type of change within Hong Kong boundaries it has not occurred before. So we do need uh, education. So I'd like to enter our main work. Uh, as I said, uh, we do have a lot of diagrams uh, to scrutinize. Secretary, yes, we will follow up, as a matter of fact. We do have suitable promotion and education. We will uh, hand out leaflets, pamphlets. So we had two rounds of questions. I've been lax uh, regarding the questions. So now we can move on to the third round. Uh, Tanya Chan and Tam Man Ho. So I would like to return to our bill. Tanya Chan. So if we return to the bill, we'd like I'd like a dep uh, hearing with the deputations. The I know. The uh, she has consulted uh, the taxi industry, but we do touch upon a wide range of issues. We talked about signage, education, but the scope of impact uh, you can say it's uh, historic, and uh, it's the first time we have right-hand drive in Hong Kong. So we I'd like to have a hearing from deputations. We'd like to hear from the insurance industry and other stakeholders. So if we had such a hearing, it can raise public awareness and uh, the public will uh, know about the right-hand drive arrangements. So I don't know why the government objects to these. We still have time to scrutinize. Uh, well, the we could go through the crematorium ordinance, and uh, the government says it's just a technical amendment. So I don't see, uh, given our efficiency under the leadership of the chairman, we sh aside uh, from uh, deput hearing from deputation, we should still be able to handle the scrutiny of the bill. I don't see what the rush is. I'd like you to consider why uh, I want to discuss this is we started at 8.45 and it didn't the discussion didn't touch upon amendments of the bill it uh, we had more questions about arrangements of the bridge uh, uh, first aid, uh, towing of vehicles, and the three governments are still negotiating and it's not confirmed. So, uh, in our transport panel and discussions in the community, we can have uh, hearings. And what we're discussing here now is the work of the bills committee. We have very concrete and technical amendments uh, changing f uh, to right hand drive well you can call for a hearing that uh, we can if it's uh, relevant to our bills committee that I will uh, uh, I can pursue that but if uh, you want to call for a hearing that is not related to bills committee work it's still if, if it's still relevant and meaningful uh, so I think there should be a venue f to handle that. So I would like legislators to consider that as well. Uh, so, Secretary, do you have any response to Ms. Tanya Chan's uh, comments? 
Of course, we respect the Bills Committee on whether we need to have a hearing. So uh, we want to s s clarify that the right-hand drive technical arrangement is because we have a 100 kilometer speed limit between the link road and the bridge and uh, the transition from Hong Kong side is the safest and the smoothest and uh, most efficient way to connect to the mainland traffic network because Hong Kong vehicles they need to cross the border to the mainland so at a certain point they need to connect to the mainland network so at a certain point they need to change from left hand drive to right hand drive because we're entering a different jurisdiction where they have right hand drive so how do we ensure Hong Kong driver safe driver and passenger safety the current arrangement is to have a transition so from Hong Kong Link Road to the bridge that is a very safe and efficient way to do so so do we need to have a hearing on that we respect legislators well we just want to say that that at some point these Hong Kong cars have to connect to the mainland network they need to change from left hand drive to right hand drive so this is the safest, most efficient way to do so. Thank you, Chair. So Ms. Tanya Chan said the the bridge is not commissioned yet. Uh, do we have uh, do we have time to deal with these different topics? But we do have a, t t a deadline for our bills committee. Thank you, Chairman. So as Chairman said. These six subsidiary legislation, it's uh, negative. It will be processed by negative vetting. So, according to Chapter One of Hong Kong laws, all subsidiary legislation that go through negative vetting, if the Legislative Council wishes to make amendments, there is a time limit. That is, within 28 days, or if it can be extended, they can add another 21 days. So, if it's extended, then within the 49-day period any legislative council meeting can make an amendment so this is related to the six subsidiary legislation so if there is a motion regarding the fixed penalty legislation we need LegCo approval they don't that doesn't have the 28 plus 21 uh, deadline so um, members should take note of uh, the necessary requirements so regarding this bill, I'd like to tell you, we need to extend, otherwise uh, uh, we would need to report to the House Committee today. So we do need to apply for an extension. So it's not that we have a lot of time to scrutinize because it's a negative vetting. Mr. Taman Ho. Chairman. I feel it's necessary to have a hearing with deputations because if you look at these uh, pieces of legislation, there has been no public participation. That's the first uh, issue. You say that uh, you we need to purchase Chinese insurance. Now, according to my understanding, if you don't have a local license, how do you purchase the insurance? Uh, our bill doesn't involve that. I, I'm just answering the uh, Undersecretary. This is our third round. We need to return to the bill. So I uh, want to ask a question about the $450. If we feel that if it is delinked from inflation, then why don't we establish a higher penalty? Why do you postpone it? Why don't you do it now? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. As I explained just now, in our separate amendment work, we are dealing with penalties related to congestion. Under Cap 240, 
we have chosen six pieces of uh, uh, areas of uh, illegal uh, disembarking of passengers, illegal di dis uh, disembarking of cargo. So we want to increase the penalty in line with inflation to uh, add to the deterrent effect. We do have also other penalties in a separate bill amendment committee uh, where we say that in the next round we will look at a further adjustment. Now regarding our right hand drive or left hand drive penalty, it is of this type. Uh, it is in the next round where we will decide whether to make any adjustment. So we feel we can deal with uh, penalties less relevant to traffic congestion under CAP 240. That's uh, just a matter of completeness. Mr. Tam, Mr. Loeko. Regarding whether we need to uh, convene a hearing, we need to consider this bill committee has a very clear ambit in uh, terms of reference. We need to scrutinize the proposed HZM uh, technical amendments. So, regarding wider issues, uh, insurance and such this is not included in the amendment so you, you say it is a public concern I will agree how the bridge operates of course we have uh, concern groups uh, drivers who are directly affected but uh, even with a, a deputation hearing, it sh it's not the work of our bills committee. It maybe should be the work of the transport panel. Uh, we can collect views, but it's not uh, relevant to our bill. We cannot follow up. So I think uh, I'm not going to argue whether the public are interested, but uh, it is not uh, up to us to follow up. Mr. Yu Siwang, regarding deputation hearing I'm worried that when the public will not look at it from a legal perspective they will be looking at uh, wider social issues the public would like uh, an opportunity to express their views especially the industry they it involves their long-term operations they would like to air their views but if we widen the scope, it affects the, this negative vetting legislation. So, so the transport panel could you provide some specific solutions in the transport panel, and we can convene a deputation hearing. Because if we widen the scope of discussion, it might affect uh, the uh, the work of the bill committee. Mr. Tanya Chan. Uh, I'll defer uh, to Mr. Wang Dinggong. Well, the public are concerned about the HZM bridge. It's an important facility. So as Mr. Low and Mr. Yu said, it's a matter of uh, appropriate venue. I think it's more appropriate to convene a deputation hearing in the transport panel and our bill committee should work on the scrutiny of the bill. So we have a very clear ambit. Uh, this morning we had a wider discussion. Chairman, you can decide uh, whether we... I am uh, biased uh, towards uh, Mr. Lo and Mr. Yu. Yes, um, Tanya Chan. We, we had some operational suggestions, but if you take note, 
we have uh, we impact the NT and uh, outlying islands taxi industry. My understanding is that there would be an expansion of their uh, operating zones, and I'm not sure would that would that be a suitable v venue to hear from the public. So. Uh, just as legislators, uh, their views might not be palatable to everybody. So, if the public are invited, if they want uh, to express views on uh, expanding their operating zones, so as uh, legislators felt that there's an opportunity to discuss the HZM bridge in the transport panel, to talk about insurance, uh, licensing, or even uh, expanding the taxi operating zones, so if chairman uh, uh, you're willing to take the initiative we can uh, express our views also so to take i uh think uh, we uh, should arrange for uh taxis uh, to uh operate at the bcf as fast as possible administration of course we respect the decision of um the subcommittee, but as far as the operating permission of uh, the taxis concerned, we have already consulted the trade, and also uh, I think there is already um, suggestion for this matter to be discussed uh, by the relevant panel. We've discussed with the uh, industry; the majority of them are in support of this arrangement. From passengers' point of view, if there are taxis are there to offer them more choice, I believe most members of the public would welcome that. As I said, uh, the amendment is technical in nature. We hope that uh, the subcommittee can make a decision on the uh, timetable, the legislative timetable. Mr. Tam. Well, uh, the administration said that all people would like that. I don't think that is ne ne uh, necessarily the case because uh, people living on land town may not want to see that because there aren't sufficient land town taxis. With this arrangement, most taxis may tend to stay at the BCF and many uh, Lantau South residents are unhappy since the um operate the commissioning of the airport uh on Lantau. Well back then there were only fifty Lantau uh, taxis but now uh, there are additional twenty. If um Lantau taxis are permitted to operate at uh at Hong Kong BCF uh the uh, residents of Lantau may not be happy. Uh, let me uh, clarify. Uh, the amendment will allow uh, red taxis and anti uh, taxis and lentil taxis to um, take passengers at HKBCF. That means there will be more taxis for uh, residents to choose from. No, no, you don't understand my point. Let's say I live in Mui Wo. The problem I encounter is I cannot find a taxi when I want to because the blue taxis are always at uh, Tong Chong and uh, airport. But then people living in Mui Wo may not be able to ride a taxi directly to uh, Hong Kong BCF. Because after uh, the BCF, after they've crossed the bridge, they may not be able uh, to ride a taxi back home. They have to switch to another taxi. No, no, no. I must uh, clarify this. The we have not changed the operating areas of Lantau taxis. Well, even if we do not change uh, the, um, if we do not change it, then uh, they can still operate at Hong Kong BCF. We are trying to address Mr. Tam's concern. Will there be short? Will we be short of taxis? After the amendment, both urban taxis and anti taxis can um, pick up passengers at Hong Kong BCF. From passengers' point of view, from Lanta residents' point of view, there will be much 
taxis for them to choose from. So this is uh, this provide extra convenience uh, to members of the pub. Mr. Lam Shak Ting, I cannot help her from uh, speaking out, uh, but please uh, stick to the main thing as far as possible. I will follow up on Mr. Jeremy Tam's question. Uh, his question is now: If uh, more taxis are waiting for passengers at HKBCF, then other people who want to uh, call a taxi on Lantau uh, will find it more difficult. You talked about uh, urban taxis, blue and uh, green taxis at HKBCF, and more choice for passengers. I think you talk about two things. And I think he's saying that um, green taxis or Lantau taxis will be able to use HKBCF anyway. But then uh, red and also uh, anti taxis will also be allowed to operate there. And so they don't have to worry. At the end of the day, there should be more Lantau taxis. You should say, well, we will take this opportunity to see whether there should be more uh, and Lantau taxis. I know oh, we are dealing with this legislative amendments, but if we do not take this opportunity, we have no way to press the government to increase the number of Lantau taxis. Well, you should not say that, well, this is a way to offer extra convenience, and I don't think this is the way you. Uh, Deal with things. Uh, I don't think uh, we can uh, complete our job in this meeting, so we'll have to seek an extension from the council first. And public hearing. I have a suggestion. For Silbas, there were a number of suggestions. And all recommendations or concerns were referred to the transport panel for as follow up. And uh, even to uh, hold a public hearing so that the panel can uh, follow up fully. Now, this is a subcommittee set up to uh, deal with the legislative amendments, and I think we should stick to our. In terms of reverence, with members' agreement, I will refer your concerns to the transport panel, hoping that we can uh, follow up on issues uh, surrounding the bridge, and if need be, public hearing a public hearing can be arranged. What do you think about this? Because there is a time limit to uh, the scrutiny, um, Ms. Tanya Chen. So, can you uh, ask uh, for a public hearing to be uh, held? And then I have to report to the panel. Well, I have uh, to uh, consult members at the transport panel. I don't think we have enough time uh, to uh, deal with other things. All right, we still have five minutes left. We can allow one or two more questions on uh, the um, legal notices, and uh, we will go to the close by close scrutiny next time. Mr. James So, I'm sorry I was late. I'd like to ask about uh, emergency rescue. Will there be any uh, provisions related to uh, emergency rescue? Well, we have only got technical amendments here. We are not touching that part. Can the DS please respond? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. To. The amendments are technical in nature, covering traffic arrangements regarding emergency rescue. The three governments are still discussing whether legislative amendments are needed. We haven't decided yet. If necessary, we will introduce amendments for the council to uh, consider. Uh, the um, uh, the whole thing is territorial based, so we will follow the respective rules and laws of uh, the territory. All right. I have a technical question to ask. 
turns from Sunset Bay to the boundary. At a certain point, there will be a mark. beyond which it is no longer Hong Kong territory and beyond that uh, mainland laws would apply. The reason I ask this is for the um, Western Corridor will also have a boundary crossing. Uh, the bridge uh, the area above the bridge and on the two sides are not of the same jurisdiction. So that so is it a case that once you are beyond the uh, boundary of the region, that is outside our territory? I'll let you know uh, whether there will be a mark to let people know and whether that is covered in this legislation. Well, in our earlier discussion, we made it clear that there will be a clear sign or clear mark to let motorists know that they are already within Hong Kong territory. I'd like to know whether uh, that is covered in this uh, subsidiary legislation. Uh, that's not needed. May I ask why? <coughs> because it is just an advisory sign to let motorists know what are what is the actual situation. Whereas the signage here is regulatory in nature, and therefore we have to include it in our legislation. So our legislative amendment exercise uh, only include uh, regulatory signage. All right. Then we will come back for our close by close scrutiny at the next meeting, which is scheduled at ten for ten forty five, the twenty second of May. So is uh, the uh, Monday after next. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.